This is Yarbo, a robot that will mow your lawn, snow blow your driveway, do your leaf blowing in the fall, tow your car, and a whole lot more. Because it isn't a robo mower. Yarbo is a modular yard robot. It has a heavy duty Yarbo core unit that uses different attachments for different jobs. If you can tow it, Yarbo can help. It'll even follow you around. I've been using it for over a week now, and the more I've used it, the more I've come to like it. You will pay a premium for it, but you're not just investing in a one season solution. Yarbo is built for outdoor weather all year long. The Yarbo core looks like a mini tank, and at 134 pounds, it feels just as tough. It rides on rugged rubber tracks instead of wheels, giving it extra traction to traverse uneven terrain and climb slopes up to 35 degrees without getting stuck. It's spring here in New York and the grass is growing, so right now Yarbo is wearing its lawnmower module. It's front mounted and it has a flexible frame that lets it follow ground contours, meaning it does a good job of hugging the bumps and dips of your lawn for an even cut. The lawnmower module is heavy too. It's 95 pounds, but connecting it is as simple as positioning it in front of the Yarbo core, lifting it up with the handles and snapping it into place. If you add the 95 pound lawnmower to the 134 pound Yarbo core unit, you've got over 225 pounds of muscle taking care of your yard. Underneath it uses dual 20 inch cutting discs, each with five blades, giving a total of about 20 inches of cutting width. That's comparable to a push mower's width, it's huge for a robot. You'll end up with crisp lines on your lawn, which is a big plus compared to other robot mowers. Another advantage Yarbo has is that compared to other robot lawn mowers, it runs for hours at a time. The battery is a hefty 1.4 kilowatt hour pack, and it's removable, allowing up to three and a half hours of mowing per charge and covering up to six acres per day. We're talking five football fields of grass per day, and that is huge. When the battery runs low, Yarbo goes back to its charging dock on its own, charges itself, and then resumes mowing where it left off. You can use the app to adjust the blade height anywhere from 1.2 to 4 inches. And Yarbo has a steel skid plate underneath to protect the blades when crossing driveways or hitting bumps. And that's what you'll consistently find with Yarbo. They didn't compromise on quality or durability. This is one tough robot. It isn't my first robot lawnmower but it's the first one I've owned that feels more like legitimate farm equipment than an RC car. Yarbo is a beast, so safety and accurate navigation are super important. Like other modern robot lawnmowers, there are no wires to bury. Instead, Yarbo uses an RTK GPS system with a data module you put on the roof. But if you can't, it needs to be somewhere with at least a 120 degree unobstructed view of the sky. I decided to fully send it and put it up on my roof. Installation was very easy. Yarbo comes with a 98 foot ethernet cable that you have to connect to your router. There's no separate power cord. It gets its power from the ethernet cable itself and they include a little adapter for that too. You do have to run a cable from outside your house to inside near your Wi-Fi router or another ethernet port. I was able to fit the cable through the same hole the Jackery guys drilled a few weeks ago underneath my deck, which made that process easy for me. I got a little frustrated when I was assembling the data module because for one step, the manual and the how-to video on their YouTube channel didn't match the parts I was seeing in the box. Eventually, it became clear that Yarbo had replaced a complicated clevis pin and bracket system with a single plastic part to prevent the antennas from moving too much. I reached out to them about it, and their team said updated manuals and videos will ship with new units and be posted online soon. For the record, their new solution is a lot better than the old one. Getting everything connected was difficult for me, but the Yarbo team is aware of the issues and they were super helpful getting them sorted out. When I installed the RTK data module on my roof, I knew it was getting power, but the light wouldn't turn green. The manual led me to believe I had a satellite connection problem. The truth was that I needed to set up the docking station first, then a firmware update wouldn't work. I went outside, unplugged the battery, and plugged it back in, and a few minutes later it worked. A clearer setup process would have avoided all the issues I had, but most importantly, the issues weren't hardware problems. When you get a new product to review, sometimes the app is buggy. You can fix apps remotely, but not the hardware. The Yarbo hardware is bulletproof. The software is only gonna get better with time. Here's how the setup process works. You walk Yarbo around the perimeter of an area of your lawn, and its GPS memorizes the boundary as you go. For anyone considering Yarbo, my strong advice is to start with broad strokes. Stay away from inside corners where the Yarbo might lose its GPS connection. You can always go back and make an area bigger after the fact, 
but if you make a mistake while mapping it for the first time, you might have to start over again. About the accuracy of its location, GPS is great, but when you have a robot mower, you need to get precision down to the level of about an inch for edging or staying away from ravines like the one that surrounds my backyard. That's the primary job of RTK. In addition to GPS and RTK, Yarbo has binocular stereo cameras, multiple ultrasonic radars, and bumpers all around. All of this combined gives it 360 degree vision and obstacle avoidance, leading me to talk about one of my favorite parts about Yarbo. Yarbo can identify and avoid obstacles like garden beds, trees, pets, and toys on the fly rather than blindly bumping into things and you don't have to mark them first on a map, which is a huge time saver. It slows down to carefully trim along edges and around larger no-go zones that you define. In my experience, Yarbo does a great job of sticking to the perimeter map, but not as well for edging when there's a steep curb, for instance. That means I still might have to do a little weed whacking after the fact, at least until the Yarbo trimmer and edger attachment comes out later this year, which sounds pretty cool. And if you're wondering if somebody can steal it, well, the Yarbo does have anti-theft features like GPS tracking, but honestly, the Yarbo weighs over 225 pounds, so it'd be really difficult for someone to pick it up and run away with it. You would need an accomplice, which is probably too much of a hassle for your average robot lawnmower thief. I ended up loving its little tank tracks. I was concerned at first that due to Yarbo's weight and the track's rubber grip, the Yarbo might damage my grass when it was making tight turns, but even in wet conditions, there was absolutely no damage at all. The tracks are designed well and built to last. The Yarbo core's motor winds a little bit when it moves, so it isn't silent, but at 60 decibels, it's still much, much quieter than a gas lawnmower. More like the volume of a normal conversation. We'll talk more about Yarbo's hardware in a bit, but overall, the build quality is really, really solid. It has a big battery with super long runtime, and the wide cutting width gives your lawn clean, crisp lines. Now let's talk about the Yarbo app. Yarbo comes with a remote controller in the box, but I found it easy enough just to use the app for setting everything up. I tested it and it works great on Android too, but I did use my iPhone for the demo. First up, mapping and zones. After everything's connected, you use the app to create a digital map of your yard. This means walking behind the Yarbo and letting it record its path using GPS. The app lets you customize cutting height and pattern for each zone. I like the fact that if you choose a simple parallel pattern, it'll rotate the pattern each time you cut your lawn, which helps to keep your grass healthy. I chose a 90 degree rotation each time, so I'll end up with a nice checkerboard pattern. When Yarbo is working, you can monitor its progress in real time on the app. There's a live map showing its path and readouts for battery level, GPS strength, and any alerts. If it encounters an issue, like it stops for an obstacle, the app notifies you. This is the Yarbo Smart Assist module. And at first I thought, okay, how is this actually gonna be useful? Well, I picked up a third-party lawn cart on Amazon for about $200, and I ended up using the Smart Assist Follow Me mode to carry mulch to my flower beds. It's amazing. The neighbors kept interrupting me to tell me how cool it was. Installing the Yarbo tow hitch was super easy. It's just sliding it on and putting in a single screw but the cart I bought on Amazon didn't have a real tow hitch, so I improvised one and I was pretty proud of myself. What ended up happening though is that the front wheel of the cart ended up jamming against the back of the Yarbo's left track and dislodged it, but I didn't notice until the next day when the track became completely dislodged. To be clear, this was 100% my fault because a real tow hitch would never have allowed this to happen. It was my fault, but I still had to fix it. I went to Yarbo's YouTube channel, which has instructions that show how to replace the summer tracks for the snowblower module. I followed their instructions, loosened a couple bolts using the tools they provide in the box, all of which worked perfectly, and I was able to fix the problem in less than 10 minutes. The amazing thing is that even though I had dislodged the track the day before and driven around on it a lot, the Yarbo just kept on going until the track completely came off the wheels that it stopped and alerted me to the problem. And even though I had basically been abusing the track for a day, there was absolutely zero damage to the track itself or the Yarbo. Again, this is one tough robot. Here are my takeaways. Once you get it set up, Yarbo does an amazing job of mowing your lawn. It's heavy, mostly metal and weather sealed. It's a product that was designed to be tough first, not light. The blades and tracks are super heavy duty. It's more professional farm equipment than robo mower. I haven't used the Leafer snowblower, but I love the idea of getting those add-ons. I live in upstate New York, and as a kid, I spent the spring and summer mowing the lawn, then raking it in the fall over and over and over again, then mowing more, 
then getting a couple weeks off before the shoveling and snow blowing began. So if one device can solve all those problems, it makes the price a lot easier to justify. And this isn't a criticism, but Yarbo is expensive, especially if you're only using it as a lawnmower. If you get the snowblower module, it's more expensive overall, but you're paying less per function. So the more modules you get, you can think of it as the less you're paying for each one. Yarbo is the Land Rover of yard robots. It will pay off if you use all of its capabilities, like mowing and snow clearing and leaf blowing, and especially if you have a large property. But for small yards without falling leaves or snowy winters, it might be overkill. And it is a big, heavy machine. Personally, I think Yarbo is only going to get better over the years. They focused on the right things first, building rugged, tough, functional hardware. The only challenges I faced were with the app and setup process, and I'm confident they'll sort out those bugs. Yarbo is an awesome idea. To have one robot for spring, summer, fall, and winter is pretty forward thinking. Your neighbors will be amazed. Everyone has said it looks amazing driving around my lawn. They think it's awesome. Thanks so much for watching this video. You can find links to where you can pick up a Yarbo for yourself in the description section below. See you here.